Hi guys, welcome back to your own channel Technical Sahil. In this video, I'll be showing you how to host a website from your local PC. The same local computer which we use daily in our day to day life. Yes, that is right. We can host our website and make it live instead of buying any third party web hosting services. We can do this in our own local PC as well. And this thing doesn't require any complex setup at all. And absolutely for free of course but obviously it will increase your electricity bills for sure because the website is hosted by your com local computer so your computer must be turned on and connected to the internet all day if you want to make your website be live 24 7 now you might be thinking that you would need a static IP address in order to make sure this works but let me tell you that you do not need anything like that because your existing internet connection through which you are watching this video right now you can use the IP which is provided by your internet service provider the same IP address I know that most of the ISPs at least here in India they disable or you can say they do not allow their customers to make web servers from their internet connection and those internet service providers do this unless you have to subscribe to their higher subscription plans but what i am going to show you in this video is going to work for any internet connection even with the mobile data you are using you just need to have a static ipv4 in order to make this works so without wasting any time let's get started so in order to make any local pc as a web server we have to install several computer programs which are basically uh, softwares so that it can host or in other words it can serve the website that you want to host whenever someone sends a request so there are many programs available and one of the most popular one is apache and in this video also we are going to use the same apache server plus we also need a database management system because we are going to host a dynamic website which needs a database connectivity as well so we will be using mysql database as our dbms but before this if we want to see the without these computer programs installed in our local pc our local pc which is currently connected to internet as well whether it responded to our web request sent by us or not so to check this we simply need to find out our ipv4 which we we can find inside our internet connection properties and we just need to copy that IPv4 from here and paste it into our web browser and as you can see it's showing us the website can't be reached now and of course we have not installed any program yet which is required to make any personal computer as a server and guys in order to install a complete package of all those programs you could just install XAMPP software XAMPP is a combined bundle of apache web server mysql or you can say mariadb php and perl and to download and install XAMPP we simply need to search download XAMPP in our web browser and press enter and click this first link from the search results which is apachefriends.org here it is showing us the available versions and guys XAMPP is supported by all three major operating systems such as windows linux and mac os and mac os so in my case i am using a windows computer so i need to download it from this section and guys make sure to download the latest version whatever it is at the bottom in your time because it will change according to the new updates and make sure to download the latest until and unless if you have any specific PHP version requirement for your project and after selecting the version click on this download button and it will just start downloading within few seconds as you can see on the bottom of my screen 
the size of this software is 146 MB which means you can install this on a PC which is having some low configuration as well so I am fast forwarding till then it finishes the downloading alright guys the download has been completed so now we just need to open this and run it as administrator at first you can ignore this warning and click ok and it would bring up the installation wizard where you need to click next and as i said earlier xamp is a complete package of all those computer programs that we need to make any normal pcs server so it's our choice either we can download them one by one separately from the official websites and install them selectively through xamp like i am doing in this case we are just making this computer a web server to host a website so we don't need this mercury mail server and we don't need this tomcat and fake send email as well you can go with all those programs to install which is default but right now in my case i am selecting just those which i really need it. so click next after choosing your selective programs you want to install and here it is asking us to give a path where we want to install them by default it has selected c drive and i'm going with the default and here it is showing me a warning that the selective folder is not empty please select a different folder guys it is showing me this error message because xamp was already there on my pc and i have uninstalled it for creating this video and while uninstalling it may be some old files remain in my c drive inside xamp folder so after clearing this folder it won't show me any error again i guess if you are installing for the first time and your xamp folder may be already empty so you won't see any error like this so if i try again and now as you can see it has not showing me any error and redirected me to the next window and here it is asking for select a language there are only two available options and i am going with the english which is default and click next again click next and here you can see it has started the installation it will take some time like 10 to 15 minutes to complete this installation so till then i am again fast forwarding this video to save some time so it has finished installing the xamp and if you click on this finish button it will automatically bring up the xamp control panel which look like this and here you can see there are different services available for now we just need these first two services which are apache and mysql but guys the control panel has opened this automatically so where we can find this to open it for the next time because it will not create any desktop shortcut to see this let's close this for now and search lamp inside the window search bar and here you will find this control panel to open it again so you can just start these two services by clicking on the start button apache as i said earlier is our web server and mysql is our dbms and this green color indicates these two services has been started without any error so if we try again visiting our ipv4 address which is provided by our isp and there you go it's showing us a default page of xamp earlier it was showing us the error uh, this site can't be reached but now it's showing the default page of xamp and to access php my admin we just need to click here and here is our php my admin exactly same as we get inside cpanel of our web hosting and here if we stop the running services from xamp control panel and if see it's still working or not so as you can see now it has showing us the same error as it was showing at the beginning so guys with this existing setting of xamp which has comes up by default we always have to open our xamp control panel and start the services again and again but if we do this setting like first finding the xamp folder which is inside c drive and here at the bottom we need to right click this xamp control exe and run it as administrator so instead of every time manually starting these services click this config button on the top right corner and from here you can select the services which should start automatically like i am selecting apache and mysql and click save now if we close this program and open it again so as you can see the selected services has been started automatically 
and as these services are running so if we again refresh this page and you can see now the ip has again started serving the http requests provided by us and they re redirected us to the default xamp page now guys our goal in this video is we want to host a website and to connect this ip to our domain in order to access that website from our domain name so we first need to delete all these default xamp file and folders and for this we first need to go inside the xamp folder and go inside this htdocs folder and guys this is the folder which is our public root whatever website we want to host we need to copy all the files here inside this folder in order to make make it accessible like first i am deleting all these existing default files and folders except this index.php and inside this index.php i am writing a php code a small php code which prints thanks for watching this video you can ignore this code if you are not familiar with php but just focus on the output as what this code does is print the is print whatever i am writing inside these double quotes echo will print this entire string and display as our output like thanks for watching this video and if i save this file and reload this page so you can see it has showing up the text as our output the same which we have typed here and if we modify this line like adding state tune and again if we save this file and refresh now you can see it has updated the output and guys this was just to show you that it is executing our php code but this was just a simple code which has no interaction with our database now to show you how we can host a dynamic website and for this we are gonna install wordpress but let me delete this file from here first and in order to install wordpress we first need to download the wordpress and for which we need to visit this website wordpress.org and click this get wordpress button which is on the top right corner and from here we need to click this download wordpress button it's showing the latest version 6.1.1 maybe it will change in the future so whatever it is we need to download and it will download the latest version of that particular time period so just like XAMPP it has started downloading the file and it has completed in just fraction of seconds so first we need to extract this zip file like this after that we need to copy all the files and folders inside this wordpress directory and paste it inside our htdocs folder after that we need to create a database for wordpress and for this we need to visit php myadmin dashboard for creating a new database we need to click this databases section and here we need to mention our database name let's say i am giving it wordpress and click this create button guys it's not necessary to have a database name as wordpress in case if we are installing wordpress you can give it any name of your database the important is to remember the name whatever you have mentioned okay so now we have copied the wordpress files created a new database now we just need to visit the ip we could say the server ip just copy it from here paste and press enter now as you can see it brings up the installation wizard at first we need to select the language which is english by default and i am continuing with it after that we need to provide our database credentials either from this wizard or directly mentioned inside wp config but for now i am using this method because it is beginner friendly so click let's go and here we need to provide first our database name which is wordpress we have just created a moment ago database user which is root in my, in this case root and we 
don't have any password for root as of now so leave it as blank and keep database host name as localhost and prefix also the default which is wp underscore after providing all such information click submit and click run the installation here we need to provide some more details about our website like site title at first it's all changeable so for now let's give it anything like my blog username let's say admin and password admin at the rate one two three it's recommended by both me and wordpress to choose a strong password in case if you are in production phase right now i am just creating this for demo so i'll choosing a simple password and because i choose a weak password i need to confirm this by checking here and here i need to provide my admin email address which is hello at the rate technical and click install wordpress guys our wordpress has been installed successfully so to login into our admin panel we simply click this login button and need to provide those credentials we have just created like username is admin and password is admin at the rate 123 and click login and we have just landed to our wordpress dashboard and yes this website is hosted on our local pc not on any web hosting like GoDaddy, Namecheap, etc. etc. And if we preview our front end, now we have installed WordPress on our local server, which means we have just seen how we can host a dynamic website on our local PC, which we made it a server. Now it has a connection with the database. And in this video, we have seen so far installing Apache server with PHP and MySQL, running a PHP code, and install a fresh WordPress. But all this we are accessing by visiting this IP and not any domain name like we normally visit any website. Like in case of YouTube, we generally type youtube.com whenever we want to visit the YouTube, not the YouTube server IP. So it's time to connect this website also with a domain and access it by a domain name. And to see this, I have already taken a domain means taken for some other reason, but right now it's unused. So in this video, we'll connect this domain with our local server. Right now, if we see the preview of this domain, it is parked and has not connected to any website. So to connect this domain, we simply need to click this advanced DNS. And clear all these existing records if you have. And click add new record. Select. A, a record in type and type at the rate inside host inside value paste the same server ip which is our internet connection ip and in ttl leave this as default which is automatic now again add a new record type is same a and in host type www this time and provide the same ip in place of value and TTL leave it as automatic. After that, click save changes. It may take some time to propagate, especially if your domain was already pointed to any other IP before. But in my case, it's a fresh domain. So hope it will not take more than a minute. But as you can see, it's still showing me the parked page. Okay, let's try opening this in a new tab. And now we don't have to visit our website through our IP address because our domain is connected with our local server IP successfully. And not just this website, we can try to visit phpMyAdmin through dot domain as well. What we need to do is simply put a forward slash after dot com and type phpMyAdmin. And we can access our phpMyAdmin with our domain name. And if we stop these services from XAMPP and try, it would be no longer accessible at all. And if we start these services again, this time we don't even need to refresh the page. So guys, in this way, you can make your home PC as a web server and can host a website without purchasing any third party hosting services. In my opinion, this can't be considered as cost saving method because the amount you are not paying your saving from the hosting provider, the same amount you have to pay for the electricity bills. But yeah, this method is good in case if you want to protect your data and want to get rid from the rules and regulations of the web hosting providers. So this method is good. In that case that's all for this video uh, thanks for watching and yeah don't forget to subscribe this channel if you like to see videos like this and 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 wish you all a very happy new year stay blessed and stay safe